Hey guys, welcome back to the Compai Sugai podcast. I have a very special guest with me today. I, actually, it's funny because we scheduled this um, must have been a week or two ago, yes. and I swear a lot has happened in these past couple weeks. Absolutely, <laughs> as it always does. I feel like my life just flashes before my eyes sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> always excitement, always something. <laughs> Which is very exciting. So I'm I'm super stoked to have you on today. Uh, for people that are listening, um, I want to introduce you to Hawaii House State Representative District 20 candidate, Jessica Kiato. Aloha. Did I, say, did I say that correctly? Yes, Kiato? you did. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And a lot of you guys know me as Priya. Um, so it's not your real name. <laughs> it is not my real name. Actually, my real name is Jessica Faye Kiatso. Mm. Um, I chose Priya basically because it means beloved. And when you have an online kind of world, mm -hmm. um, people don't always use their real names. And mm. for me, it was more of a protection type thing. Not to say I have anything to hide, but um, it's more... Again, when you learn the the whole situation with mm. um, protecting yourself from, again, privacy, right? Yeah. And so and your friends and family, of course. Yeah. Too, you know? Oh, absolutely. And mm -hmm. so Priya means beloved, and I really loved it. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go with it. Mm -hmm. Plus, then it started being that I knew how people knew me mm. in my the online world. The online world. <laughs> and so that actually helped me when mm. I started meeting people. Oh, okay, you know me from this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You look like a Priya anyway. Oh, so. thank you so much. <laughs> actually, Chiazzo is, uh, I, I looked it up. It's a city in Italy, right? Yes. And I actually have been to Italy and it was beautiful. Mm. Uh, my family originates from Naples. So, okay. yeah, it's a it's beautiful thing. I love my last name. As a matter of fact, um, my bestie in the movement always is like, when he found out my last name, he's like, cat. So like everyone just <laughs> loves saying it a certain way. So I'm always like, that's awesome. Uh, and when you play sports, I'm Jessica. That's a very common name, mm -hmm. right? So everyone yeah. calls you by your last name. Mm. So I'm used to that. And I actually really love my last name. So yeah, I'm not definitely. ashamed of it at all. Like yeah. that, it's an awesome last name. It's unique. Did they ever say like Priya Kiazzo? Um, so well, <laughs> now, but at the same time, no, no one even still people think Priya is my last name oh, really? so, or my first <laughs> name. Sometimes it, it just depends. Mm, yeah, mm -hmm, definitely. <laughs> so, uh, we have a lot to unfold here, but before we even get to some of that, mm. uh, that stuff that we could talk about, yeah. uh, let's, let's talk about you as a person, but you know, what, uh, where'd you grow up? Um, you, you said you went to public school. We, th we yeah. talked before this, uh, before we started recording. Yeah. So originally, um, I am from Arizona, Phoenix, and I have kind of a unique upbringing. A lot of people don't know this about me, mm -hmm. but I do like to get personal on types of podcasts. So people do get a better background on me. Mm -hmm. So the biggest thing is, uh, that makes me more unique is I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona, but I was artificially inseminated uh, by my <laughs> two moms. I have two moms and I have no father figure wow. in my life. Mm. And this is back in the 80s. So they went to their fertility doctor. Wow, okay. um, my sister and I are completely blood related. The mm. same guy came back. Um, and that's one of the most unique things because a lot of people try and label you. Uh -huh. And also because I'm running as a Republican, uh, I want the community to know that there's always these boxes that people try and put you in mm -hmm. or stigmas. I'm against the grain. Um, I, that's kind of the beauty of who I am. Mm -hmm. I speak truth, speak for the constitution, speak for lots of things, but essentially I grew up with very two strong women in my life mm -hmm. um, who raised me so well and I am so grateful and I was so loved. And I went to a public school a great public school. My parents really focused on education. I did go to a private Catholic high school out there called mm. St. Mary's. And then I went to University of Arizona mm. in Tucson. I lived there for seven years. And then I decided to move here. Uh, okay. I visited my best friend from college. Mm -hmm. And I had a career out there. I have my career's really been more of caregiving, um, I studied family studies, human development, mm. so uh, taking care of people. I've always felt I was a vessel of helping others, no mm. matter well, what, that's been that. my calling. Mm -hmm. And so I found myself babysitting, nannying, and caregiving, and taking care of special needs. Mm. And I just found myself stagnant, and I knew I needed a change. And when I came to the islands, I just 
it you called me. It. Oh, fell absolutely in love. I went to Big Island too, and I just, I, the calling was real. I've been out here now 12 years. Wow. Yeah, and um, it's just been so beautiful of an experience and a journey, mm -hmm. a very amazing journey. I Talk to me even a year ago. I would never think I'm here today <laughs> <laughs> in this place. And then another thing is your um, massage therapist too. You I own uh, your own company called Hoi Life Wellness. Yeah, it's High Life Wellness, and um, that is a company I started during uh, the pandemic or pandemic, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but it's mainly because what happened was I realized I can't. I wanted to be my own boss, mm -hmm. and I encourage everyone entrepreneurship. I encourage everyone to learn a skill set mm -hmm. that they can hone in and be their own boss. Um, I had wanted to do this three times in my life and didn't, my family was very big on getting, you know, my college degree yeah. and <laughs> to like become all these things, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. Mm. And so I found myself still wanting to do massage mm -hmm. and things worked out with a nanny job and caregiving job I had that I was able to okay, work it good. in. Yeah. And then I was able to go to school and I built my business from the ground up mm -hmm. and it's, I work for myself. It's beautiful. That's also, people question me a lot. Like, how are you able to be everywhere? And I say, because I'm my own boss and I can make my own schedule. So, mm -hmm. and I prioritize events and people. Mm -hmm. So some, right now, like, it's like I work to get by mm -hmm. uh, because I see the priorities of what's going on. Mm -hmm. So, but I love what I do. I love being a vessel of healing. It's, uh, it's, I feel blessed to have that skill set. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, thank you for talking to us about um, everything that's been going on in your life up to now. But yeah. there's uh, you're you're running for government. Well, I mean, what was the breaking yeah. point for you? So I started off basically, I want to say I was in a toxic relationship when I finally got out of it. I went full throttle more in the freedom movement. I've mm -hmm. been passionate about things um, and my rights, standing up for my rights. And in doing so, I met some beautiful people, like mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful mm -hmm. and inspiring me mm -hmm. and learning. And so there's people who I learned from about learning more about my rights and being more of an activist. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but then helping others in the community as well, mm -hmm. or even inspiring, not even knowingly, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but just ways that I just, I needed to create change on a different level. Mm -hmm. And so when I was told that I was gonna have certain rights stripped from me, I, it broke my heart. Um, I actually, I was raised uh, as a cashew. I like to say a Catholic Jew. Mm. So um, <laughs> I do understand, I like <laughs> yeah, my, I do understand my history. And I, I was scared to see history repeat itself. Mm. And the government overreach here, no one talks about. So what inspired me more was I keep seeing California, I keep seeing New York all over the place. Mm. No one's talking about these islands. And it just blew my mind because we were the most strict, the most locked down, the most restricted, mm. and um, still are. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, it scared me. Mm -hmm. And in scaring me kind of is like, you need to face your fears, right? Aloha over fear. Mm -hmm. And so I just felt that fire burn within me and in doing so, it was mostly the people asking that of me. I didn't, I don't really like politics. Um, I've kind of stayed clear. I have voted um, in my community before, but it's not really my cup of tea because I see the corruption. I see the sellouts. Mm -hmm. I see people who run on certain campaigns who do not follow through. Mm -hmm. uh, and I see it as this image. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make the change within my community starting there mm -hmm. and to show that there are real people who want to represent you who cannot be bought, mm -hmm. who will stand their ground and represent and listen to the people. Mm -hmm. And in running, that's what I did. I listened to the people. Everyone's like, are you running for something? Well, you know, I decided to pull papers last minute. I contacted uh, the person I'm running against in the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. She never got back to me. So I decided to run. Uh, I want to see the people who are active in the community who are trying to make the change. And I need to know where you stand on certain things. Mm -hmm. And so when I see uh, even my incumbent, he's been in the position for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And 
I don't see him anywhere except yeah. <laughs> for getting a little flyer in the mail. Uh, um, uh -huh. What are you doing for the community? I've also seen his responses to the community, mm. which were alarming to me. And I just felt I had to do something on a greater scale. And if I can use this to even as a platform to just expose more truths of what's happening here, mm -hmm. get more exposure on even what we're doing in the community on the grassroots mm -hmm. and a uh, freedom fighter movement, mm -hmm. that's beautiful. And so I'm just a regular person who's mm -hmm. listening to my, to the people, we the people, mm -hmm. and uh, trying to represent them to the best of my ability. Definitely. And the thing about like, when people say like they're running for government, especially like these days, it's kind of a taboo word because there's such a negative connotation to that you know like people just already see it as like oh another person that's they're gonna say they're running for change they don't they don't do it they're gonna just show up door to door and then they're gonna when they get elected then they're gonna escape us you know yeah. but then i think now there's a big push for people that actually mean what they say when they say we're running for change mm -hmm. because we're sick of it we're sick of what we've been seeing over the past eight years you know what i mean it's it's it spreads even before uh covid19 so i think there's a big push now you're part of that push and people are waking up to it you know what i mean yeah and then people that say like oh we're running for government then it's it's actually like okay you know we have some hope here you mm -hmm. know what i mean and you're part of that hope I mean, I hope so. <laughs> so in all honesty, that is bit the big push, right? Mm -hmm. And so unfortunately with COVID-19 and these protocols and pr like policies, mm -hmm. uh, we have been protecting people from actually coming into work and holding them accountable. Mm. So this lack of accountability has been the biggest issue with government officials. There is too much power. Mm. The government overreach, it's tyrannical. Mm -hmm. It needs to be shifted. People get complacent. Um, right. And they make mm -hmm. these deals, these back door deals, see who's funding them, mm -hmm. see like it's very interesting to actually look at the finances mm -hmm. of where they're getting the money from mm -hmm. and then seeing how they vote. Because remember, we're supposed to be representing the people. So mm -hmm. voting for them best interests, not for my pocket, mm -hmm. not for to keep, you know, ranking up in the system mm -hmm. you know you're gonna make waves and mm -hmm. i i understand that but what alarms me more is that these people who are either selected unfortunately which we need to relinquish the power back to the people and getting more elections going when it comes to sheriffs when it comes to the board of education you name it mm -hmm. uh it should always be a vote mm -hmm. and when they do not vote for the people we need to expose that and that's mm -hmm. really what's happening right now uh, even with the lockdowns, 99% of the people voted against it, yet mm. it still passed with 8,000 wow. votes, okay? <laughs> and um, this is, this is the, <laughs> it, it's, it's disgusting, wow. really. And if that doesn't show you an agenda, mm. and I think that's the biggest mm. thing is what is their agenda? to keep in office, to keep um, their pockets flowing and to not be held accountable. And that's mm -hmm. how they hide. Mm -hmm. So my whole goal and what you see me do a lot is holding them accountable, mm -hmm. asking these questions. Uh, I actually did have talks with the mayor, I think it was two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and um, I was very grateful he gave me that hour mm -hmm. to talk with him along with uh, Kimberly, Nurse Kim, as a lot of people know, and it was very interesting. Uh, the response he gave me as the follow-up was more disturbing, which is they do not want to meet with you. I want a round table essentially because okay. everyone goes like this, the pointing of fingers, uh -huh. enough of that. Mm -hmm. How about we get one person from the DOH, one person from the BOE, one person from the DOE, mm -hmm. one person in any type of position all together so we can talk about stuff because everyone goes like this. And the pointing of fingers is so alarming mm. um, and just how they kind of make these decisions mm. that I think it'd be very interesting to see them all together in a place where we can hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. They deny a town hall. We will not get a town hall. I've asked for that. The mayor oh, denied it. Okay. Yep. And then um, on top of it, he basically told me, I want to almost say verbatim because I would like to read it, but I cannot. I'm trying to still respect people in office. Yeah. But openly, I do want to say 
they do not want to meet with you or anyone. And they do not want anyone who is against what they have to say. Mm. Essentially, to sum it up, it's it was uh, disturbing, this mm. uh, text that I received from him in response to the follow-up to our meeting. Mm. Um, you know, we work for you guys. He, he mentioned he works for you guys, too. He's getting paid how much? We got to talk about that. He made a that. pledge for the people. Mm, yeah, that was actually his campaign, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So for him to say that or to... I mean, mm -hmm. that might not have been his words. It might have been even harsher than that. Yeah. For him to express that, he goes against his own word. Well, and I asked him to see, see me in an email. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest thing, too, the transparency. You're saying that you tried to speak to them. Mm. Well, show me by putting me in the, the message so I can see who he's actually asking, which is also a dilemma. Mm. A lot of people don't want to say who they're sending information to, okay. <laughs> keeping it very secret, mm -hmm. um, but saying they, who is they, mm -hmm. what are their names, so I can hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm kind of confused by the mayor as a whole, just because of what his campaign ran on. He said he couldn't do anything about it, his hands were tied, he has to stay in his lane, actually, where, uh, or when you get into office, you need to stay in your lane. That oh. was his exact words, I have it on video. Um, people wonder why I video, it's for protection and also for accountability for right. them. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I just was shocked by that, too. And truthfully, he does have a say. He's been in media for how long? Mm -hmm. He could be speaking out. Mm -hmm. He could be representing the people and calling these people out, mm -hmm. saying these people deserve it. The people of these islands deserve to have a town hall mm -hmm. and deserve to be uh, addressed. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is you'll be lucky if you'll get an email back, a call back. Mm especially with the DOE, the Department of Education. Mm -hmm. um, that's the worst uh, that I find. You're not gonna get the answers. You will never get a call back or an email back even. Um, it's it's horrendous, mm. it's despicable. And with all these money, with all the money coming in, let's, let's hire new staff yeah. who can actually have more accountability and get back to people. Uh, Cause when, the biggest thing is when you ignore the people when you don't even give a response, and I'm not talking like a response like Ed Case or Kai Kahele, mm -hmm. um, if you write them, it's kind of a, this generic just mass uh, message a lot of the time with the DOE too. You need to personalize it and it needs to be read. It needs to be addressed. The people matter. And when you ignore them, you make them feel like they don't matter. And you wonder why people are upset. Mm. You wonder why emotions start getting heightened. Mm -hmm. When it becomes a habit, when it becomes over time, of course people are going to be upset. It mm -hmm. makes absolute sense. So my goal is, and that's what I've been doing, volunteer work for I don't know how long now, of just mm -hmm. listening mm -hmm. and listening to the people and their concerns. How can I help you? Mm -hmm. How can, even if it's venting, mm -hmm. um, and they talk about the mental health issues and stuff, and in my head I'm thinking to myself, they're creating so many mental health issues right. by taking away <laughs> our control, our bodily autonomy, um, our by taking uh, away people's voice. Oh, one hundred percent, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And you all deserve to be heard, mm -hmm. and everyone's voice matters, and that's why voting matters so much. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of another running thing that I'm going off of too. You know, election protection uh, as number one. Mm -hmm. Most people don't want to vote because they don't feel like their vote matters. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. That's a huge problem. Why is it that majority people that you speak to do not want to vote because they don't feel it matters? Mm -hmm. How can we change that? And that's by changing the system, bringing it back to how it should be. You know, again, making sure we're not just checking things off, no ID, um, mm -hmm. smaller precincts, we're checking things, we're not just putting them into a machine. And uh, there's just so much corruption on so many levels. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't we want to, take away from uh, the corruption, if you will, or the ways that could be more corrupt and bring mm -hmm. it back to the full transparency. Mm -hmm. So then people, we could restore the faith in the voting system. Right. So that's, that's a huge goal of mine. Um, I think that's actually our biggest threat because the voting, if we can't even make sure that it's real or <laughs> efficient right. or valid, mm -hmm. then, then how are we even gonna get the people that we need in office elected? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, especially for like, I, I think like a lot of Hawaii voters, maybe they they don't feel as invested in Hawaii, you know, mm -hmm. in elections because they don't feel like they're actually part of something. 
right? They don't part. They don't feel part of the change because they just know that a government or there's an agenda already put in place, so that if even if they decide to vote another way, the agenda is going to be like, oh, we we already right. made up our minds here, so it doesn't matter what you say. Right. And then now that you know for COVID, now we have like mailing ballots and stuff like that. How are we supposed to know that our ballot actually went in, went through, and was confirmed? We don't know that because it's a mailing ballot. So, so. I actually have a little note on that um, just because I originate from Arizona, right? Mm -hmm. So when I left, I still got mail-in vote from Arizona to vote. Oh. And my family is like, wait, are you not registered to vote? And I'm like, I am registered. I'm voting. Like, mm -hmm. what do you mean? Yeah. My family's very big on voting. Mm -hmm. So and I was like, <laughs> I'm registered. I'm voting. And they were just like, well, then why did we get this in the mail? I'm like, that's a great question. Mm. Why did you? The only people that should be voting by mail, the only people is um, people who are overseas in the uh, military mm -hmm. and the people who are actually permanently disabled. Mm -hmm. So... In all reality, it should be a day off. Mm -hmm. We should all have plenty of areas where we're not having to sit outside for hours on end mm -hmm. to vote in person. It should totally be agree. it should be absolutely accessible, and there should be ID. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't just be having these mail-ins, and that is a huge concern. Mm -hmm. I I absolutely agree with you, and that's why election protection is one of the biggest concerns, and we really need to take it back. We need to reevaluate it, and we need to change the policies. And that's why legislation and the people who are in office matter. They could be proposing this. Mm -hmm. And then the people who deny it, let's evaluate those people. Mm -hmm. You know? Exactly, yep. So I want to circle back a little bit yes. because, like I was saying, uh, you've had a big couple of weeks um yeah what happened at the convention center i mean oh yeah <laughs> you got arrested what what you got you got charged for trespassing I yeah. mean, tell us about that experience so um unfortunately it was real unfortunate i was very excited to go to my first live debate mm -hmm. and it was for the democrats the top three uh who are running for lieutenant governor democrats who are running top three for governor and mm -hmm. top three interesting just uh for just, republicans yeah, but for, for governor, governor. Right. and uh i, I actually right. found that pretty inappropriate mm -hmm. i i and it was interesting too the republicans were at a 9 p.m hour mm -hmm. and the timing was also not appropriate in my eyes anyway i was very excited um I did get an invite and I was able to get a ticket and I just wanted to be there in person. I brought my notepad, my pen. I want to learn. I'm a sponge right now and I want to represent the people. So hearing all these sides and arguments and decisions uh, it was so exciting for me. And mm -hmm. I went to go in and the convention center, I got in, but the room itself it had a sign and I didn't know this. I actually already got a wristband. Mm -hmm. And then when I went to go in, they said I couldn't go in. I said, oh, why? I had a wristband already. I had a wristband. Jeez. I already gave my ticket, had the wristband, and I was told I could not go in without a mask. Now, many of you know me. Um, I am, my word is my bond. Who I am, I stand by it. I do not shy away from it. I do not like to manipulate to, uh, to fit their narrative. Mm -hmm. And there is no reason why anyone should have been wearing a mask anyway. Mm -hmm. Regardless, I cannot wear one. Mm -hmm. And I told them that. And I said, so what accommodation do you have for people like me? Mm -hmm. They could not answer that. And I said, okay, can I speak to the supervisor? Little did I know, though, all behind the scenes after I got out of jail, I found out from multiple people that plenty walked in without a mask. Mm. Plenty of people were inside without a mask. You'll see the debates. The candidates don't have a mask. Mm. You'll see the debates. Mm -hmm. The reporters don't have a mask on mm -hmm. who are asking certain questions, mm -hmm. which is fine. All of that. But why was I targeted? So mm -hmm. the whole situation, I didn't really understand because I stand so strong in my morals and my values, and I'm not going to be bullied. And mm -hmm. in a, my constitutional rights and in the Civil Rights Act of 1964, I have every right to exercise my rights mm -hmm. and stand for what I believe in, not just for me, but for all of you too. So I waited, Secure, like the security called uh, this woman 
I, I don't want to name her on this, but I have publicly put her out there. Right, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because I was concerned because she basically, when I talked to her, she's like, oh, you don't remember me. That's a scary thing. Mm. Um, what I've realized is certain people have an image of me or a misconception even of me mm -hmm. that I'm a troublemaker or anything like that when I'm just exercising my rights mm -hmm. or I'm trying to get the truth out. Mm -hmm. And people shy away from that. Mm -hmm. And it makes them uncomfortable. But the truth is, is I'm going to stand up for everything. And so when she said that, I was like, oh, I'm going to start recording right now because mm -hmm. I don't know what she's going to come at me with. So she she basically said, well, what's your problem? Like, what are your issues? And I told her I can't wear a mask. She's like, well, why? And the truth is, that's a violation right there. I do not have to reveal anything to you. You are not my doctor. You are not my lawyer. All you need to know is I cannot wear one. You cannot ask me for proof mm -hmm. of anything. Um, it was actually just very I, disturbing even promoted that you needed to wear a mask no the no center and, anyway so you look on the convention center site and it actually states that you do not have to wear a mask mm. and on the event i had no idea there was no warning this was not intentional that i had to even do this as a matter of fact i was uncomfortable because most of um this time period of the the whole lockdowns mm -hmm. was really hard for me because to go anywhere was a struggle. It takes a lot of energy yeah. to just go shopping. <laughs> yeah. And so it for does. me, yeah. <laughs> it, and so for me, I'm like, I actually don't want it. I don't mm -hmm. want the controversy. I don't want to battle. The fact that I just got bra like brought back in time mm. to the times where <laughs> I was fighting so hard just to exercise my rights, mm -hmm. I just was shocked. I was actually thrown off by it. I was not prepared. Before I used to carry my paperwork of my constitutional rights, read them off. Mm -hmm. along with the fact that it's a public accommodation it is state property uh so then that way a lot of officers actually they they claim that they are you know law enforcement right mm -hmm. the problem is is that they're not always so educated in law and i'm not saying for everyone but i am just saying they don't always know mm -hmm. uh, mandate wasn't a law either mm -hmm. that was a misconception mm -hmm. so it's important that we help in that process mm -hmm. you know not scold them per se Although sometimes they come at you in a certain way, you have to be like, no, I'm t I'm literally reading. This is my rights. Mm -hmm. And their job as, as swearing to the oath is to protect uh, those rights. Uphold the law. Uphold that. Mm -hmm. So after 90 minutes of still waiting to get my question answered, um, she probed me in the sense saying, well, then call the cops because I was like, do I need to call the police? To pr mm -hmm. uh, I thought they were going to protect my rights. Mm -hmm. uh, they did not. And I was sitting casually with her, talking to her about it. They served me a trespass. They read it to me. I was like, you know, no, you cannot trespass me. I did nothing wrong. Mm. Asking a question is not a crime. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so how are you going to accommodate me was mm -hmm. the only question. I refused to leave the building because I didn't even go into the room mm -hmm. i could still be in the building it's a public building mm -hmm. it's state property right. and i wasn't breaking any law yeah you're just sitting so, there asking questions exactly and mm -hmm. she tried to claim that i created a scene which is absolutely false and i want to be vindicated in this because my live did disappear so um there are people who watch my live and i'm asking them to give me their testimonies mm -hmm. in the live mm -hmm. uh just for more evidence because that was my evidence that disappeared. And I was sitting down and next thing you know, they're arresting me for uh, trespassing. Mm -hmm. I never left the building. So normally you, to get arrested for trespassing, you have to leave the building, enter back in. Mm. It, they can't arrest you for trespassing. Mm. You know, they have to escort you out. I think the biggest dilemma right now too is like, I, if people need to know my past. You know, I have three false arrests. So. I have been arrested three times. One was asking Lieutenant Governor Josh Green some questions, and um, I was roughed up a bit from that one. The other one previously was, um, the first one was I was helping an auntie at a bank and I helped break up a fight. Her bank account was closed, it was a mask issue. You know, everything was fine, wow. peace officer was there. Uh, I broke up the fight, even though there was cop cars all in there, and I got pushed into a wall. I broke my toe, wow. um, and I was arrested, but every time I have my day in court, there's no day in court. It never happens. They never prosecute me. And this has to stop. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't just, w there's real criminals out there. Um, I myself, yeah. I part of my campaign mm -hmm. is tough on crime. 
Mm -hmm. And we can switch to that too because I had my car stolen. And when my car was stolen, within 24 hours, that guy was let out. And I'm like thinking to myself, Grand Theft Auto, mind you, he had four big black trash bags full of stuff because the cops all put it in bags. My car was, what? it was recovered. I, I, I'm blessed. My car was recovered within three hours. Okay. And essentially he had gone on a crime spree. There was all sorts oh of gosh. equipment, phones, purses, um, like I'm talking like chainsaw, like it was just some weird stuff and oh all God. in my car, it was just flooded with things. They're like, is anything in here yours? No, <laughs> I'm just like everyone else. I don't keep anything in my car for a reason mm -hmm. to protect myself so it doesn't get broken in. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, he was let out within 24 hours. Still haven't heard anything about that case. And this was months ago. This oh actually was gosh. back uh, in October. And why I say tough on crime, because they said, oh, because of COVID, we just let them out. Okay, to be repeat offenders, <laughs> um, and unless it was a violent crime, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest problem is is what ties into crime is you know the drug addiction, and then you know the homelessness, and then the crime. It's all hand in hand, mental mm -hmm. health mm -hmm. uh, that needs to really be addressed in the community. Mm -hmm. And that's actually one of the biggest things in my area. So um, I'm all the way from Diamond Head to Kahala mm -hmm. and Mackay side of the freeway. And I'm going to tell you the biggest thing that they're telling me is the homelessness and the crime. Mm. And it's a scary thing because you would I live in Kahala. You would think, oh, that's a nicer neighborhood. People have these ideas. Mm -hmm. But I had my but car. If people, so yeah. If people walked around there. They would know. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And, you know, they're shifting. And Diamond Head itself has a whole homeless commune over there. Mm -hmm. yep. um, um, and they're not talking about it. They're not addressing it. And we actually do have some beautiful uh, nonprofits that have been in place. There is the Honu Project that was going on uh, that helped out in Wahiwa. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of places that actually were really successful nonprofits in relocating. We actually have a re uh, relocating uh, program. Mm -hmm. So if you are not from here, and you're breaking the law, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you're like from any descent or mm -hmm. country per se, they will send you back. And this could actually be beneficial wow. sometimes Didn't for people. We're not utilizing it. Uh. So we need to bring that to awareness and utilize it. And also don't let one rotten apple spoil the bunch. And what, that's basically what's happening with these beautiful programs that have been proven to be successful. Mm -hmm. There is a little bit of corruption of money and other issues. So then we, we we get rid of that person, but we don't get rid of the program. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Kind of like there's mm -hmm. there's lots of things that are working, but then we just scrap the whole project as uh, opposed to scrap the person mm -hmm. uh, that's not. Uh, that's that screwing should... everything up. Exactly. That's the poison. Yes. Right. So there actually are great programs right now that we have in place that we need to be exercising and start implementing. They're mm -hmm. here for us. And so my goal is to kind of bring those things back and also to just like fix that issue. Um, Cause I know my community especially is really concerned with, they don't want to just arrest people. Mm -hmm. No one wants to just throw people in jail or, you know, strip them of anything. We right. want to help support them, mm -hmm. you know, give them a safe environment and a new chance. And sometimes, no, you do need to be relocated. I know the mm -hmm. local community, especially, you know, th the, the abuse that kind of goes on with all these foreigners coming in it's a huge topic so if you're creating crimes and you're a foreigner i mean i'm sorry but no you don't deserve to be here mm -hmm. yeah they need to reconnect yes. with their society their community yeah stuff. absolutely i mean it's they're bringing it over here and creating the crimes here and have no respect for the law and no respect for the, like the land you mm -hmm. know so that's that's a huge dilemma. And not only that, but also the oceans. I mean, we see what's going on right now. Um, and it, a lot of people want to label Republicans as not caring for the environment. I used to work for Greenpeace. Um, <laughs> I actually care for the environment greatly. I just have a different idea of how to be more effective with mm. how to take care of the environment. Mm. And also, I understand that there's too many policies and regulations with these restrictions to get things done, mm -hmm. um, especially with like Red Hill, for instance, and mm -hmm. the water crisis. There are things that can be done and implemented, but there's a lot of red tape. And um, these checks and balances are always great, but how many is too many? Mm -hmm. So we need to we need to understand that. And, you know, like I always say, reveal that. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And th- my first taste of that was actually I was a part of Coconut Coalition and the restoring of Cocoa Crater Stairs. And I used to be mm. heavily involved in that mm-hmm. um, until my knee injuries. And I got to be a part of a, um, a meeting with the city council and I just saw <laughs> the kind of the corruption uh-huh. and what they're spending the money on. Uh-huh. And I'm just like this. And I called them out then. Mm. And actually, that's kind of my first like kind of activist more so in more of the public eye of my community Mm -hmm. besides Greenpeace beforehand. Mm -hmm. So it just motivated me. Actually, I met Tommy Waters that day, too. And he's like, who are you? (laughs) And he's like, what do you do? And I'm like, I'm just a nanny. He's like, he looked at me kind of like, be careful of this, like, you know, what's to come. And now, Uh you know, that was how many years ago. And now I'm here and Mm -hmm. now I'm running. So it's just interesting (laughs) because... Especially Tommy Waters, but yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's come full circle. (laughs) Yes, it has. It has. (laughs) I mean, that's crazy. You know, with, I think with um, going back to like the the snail's pace that our government moves at, Mm -hmm. because, you know, one big, um, one big thing people always complain about is the, the policies, the procedures that people want to see, but it's not really like, going anywhere or it fails it it even fails before even being signed and enacted so that could be well i talked about it in in sean's podcast but it could be something about like complacency we have officials that they're like okay everything's fine we don't need to change anything let's just go in the same direction Mm -hmm. and then the thing is for people that are listening for people that are going to vote for the first time you know the definition of insanity is doing the same things but expecting different results so if we keep voting the same exact way and expect different results it's going to stay the same so speaking my language we need to we need to change that nothing changes if nothing changes exactly so that's the biggest dilemma Mm -hmm. and it's actually a downward spiral right now Mm. um i'm i'm beyond concerned that's also why i'm stepping up in different ways because Mm -hmm. i'm seeing my community just going down and mm-hmm. i've been here now 12 years and what i saw 12 years ago to what i see now is alarming it's, it's completely different so different and mm-hmm. scary mm. it's so scary and unfortunately due to um our lockdowns and taking away our rights to work mm-hmm. and stripping people of their jobs this is causing a higher crime rate more mental health issues uh more drug abuse Mm -hmm. and then more crime Mm. and i'm seeing all these policies getting put into place and i don't think it's really for the people we have to look at what the people are really saying Mm -hmm. how many of these politicians are in place right now doing uh questionnaires to not just a news source that also (laughs) is only to the people who that's one of my biggest dilemmas Mm -hmm. because there's a bias you're not connecting with everyone. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, but there is a bias with the media and we have to address that as well, Mm -hmm. right? And so, I mean, that's prevalent with the KITV right now with Mm -hmm. um, their debates. There's a clear bias and we need to address it. And, you know, Civil Beat talks about always uh, full disclosure, they wanna expose more. Civil Beat can do a great job, but they can also do a very biased job. Mm -hmm. And that needs to be addressed too. Mm -hmm. And that's a perfect example of the BOE meetings and kind of the reporting that went on there, too. Mm -hmm. Um, It was kind of, yeah, I just have an issue with the bias. We need to address the issues head on and we can change policy, but you have to vote in change. Mm -hmm. And so not only that, but the people have an individual responsibility to stand up for themselves Mm -hmm. and hold their elected officials accountable. Mm -hmm. Who is your representative? Who is your congressman? Mm -hmm. Who's in your district? What role can you play in your community? We can be so much more self-sustaining and more self-reliant than on the government too in doing this. Mm -hmm. And we need less government control, but the community needs to unite more and have the faith in themselves and take it back a notch in the sense of the groundwork. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing is easy that's worth having. Mm -hmm. It's a challenge, right? right? Mm -hmm. But Right now, when we're talking about these like inflation and the surge of food, we're talking about the surge of gas. We're talking about all of these things. Community gardens, Mm -hmm. you know, let's let's talk about being self-sustaining. These islands are so it's so beautiful in so many ways how we can be so much more self-sustaining than any other 
place mm -hmm. and what we can grow here and how the community base is already strong, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of the focus of everything. So why are we so disconnected and what happened? And I'm going to tell you, they keep creating these new divides. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Republican against Democrat. Then it's, oh, you know, the vaccinated versus the unvaccinated. Mm -hmm. And it's all this stuff back and forth. Stop the divide. Is anyone listening to one another? Mm -hmm. What's the real issue? <laughs> Can we just talk about solutions too? So identify the problem, talk about the solution. Mm -hmm. And we have so many solutions out there. And the best part is, even if we as uh, your representatives don't, we have advisors. But beyond all that, you are the advisor. Mm -hmm. You have the say because... Mm -hmm the people are supposed to be represented. So it's not me who's supposed to have all the answers. Mm -hmm. It's the people. Mm -hmm. And so I might not have all the answers. I might not be boom, 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 and recited mm -hmm. and, um, you know, faking it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be real with you. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to investigate this further. And as a matter of fact, what are your solutions? Mm -hmm. What are, do you have ideas? Let's investigate that more mm -hmm. and let's figure it out together. Because again, we are a community united as one divided. We, you know, united we stand divided, we fall. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the biggest things too. I just, I worry about the division mm -hmm. and I'm seeing the deconstruction of, you know, all of Hawaii as a whole. I'm just, I'm really concerned. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm, even I've traveled to the other islands. I love them. Um, <laughs> the community, I've spoken at different events. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very well connected to very many people who really care about the people and what's going on. And uh, this is not, even though I'm just a district, mm -hmm. I'm listening to everyone. Mm -hmm. And my door is always open. So it's like the open door policy is not the case with a lot of our politicians. That's another big issue. Mm -hmm. um, closed doors, they hide behind the sunshine law, which <laughs> needs to be revised. Mm -hmm. Sunshine law means transparency. Mm -hmm. And in most states it is, not here. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're hiding behind it. They're not showing up to work. The DOH is a perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. You cannot get an appointment. Um, you show up to the building. I. I question, oh God, go ahead. Really? There's a security guard there. You can ask to speak to someone. They're going to deflect, deflect. You get nowhere there. You oh, cannot oh. enter the building. Jeez. So there's just these situations that's inappropriate. And that's on this island. Mm. That's not always for every island. Mm. So I think that's the other thing is there's, if all the islands are so separate by their counties and they're treated differently, then shouldn't they have their own board of education everywhere else too? Mm -hmm. um, they can't show up to things. And I feel like, again, the islands are so spread apart. We're all divided by water. We can't, mm -hmm. we can't just island hop yeah. to be present. It's not that simple. We have no ferry, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like... Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just not, it's not reality. Mm -hmm. And so we really need to, like, mend these gaps and kind of have more of a less free range and be more united, mm -hmm. even with the islands, on our policies that are even in place. Mm -hmm. And if we're not then why is it still just one state? Mm. And that's kind of what confuses me a little bit mm -hmm. when I see so many different things. I understand we're separated by counties, but everywhere else in the entire United States can drive to a different county. Mm -hmm. We cannot. So that's a huge dilemma right mm -hmm. there. And the lack of accountability, I said, the pointing of fingers is very real and you can't show up there, mm -hmm. you know? And Hawaii is such a small state compared to oh, California yeah. or even Washington State. I love Washington. But um, we're so small that there should be more accountability. It should be open communication. And then even in the communities, I feel like, like you were saying, you know, state reps, they represent the people, yes. but the people are there in the communities themselves. The, the state rep can't be everywhere at once. No. But the, like I said, the people are there. So if you're listening and you see something in your community it's your responsibility to go out and talk about those things mm -hmm. have those discussions have those questions in place for your representative and to address them and hopefully your state rep is great enough to address them with you and to be able to connect and not have this divide that we see amongst in hawaii yeah they're the liaison right, right. like they are that middle person to the higher ups to really mm -hmm. create change to get bills passed to listen to the community um i i loved everything that you said right now just because it touches on my heart so much because we really do 
one of the things that I say, if you see something, do, do something, something, you know, mm -hmm. and we've changed this term to if you see something, say something. It's like mm -hmm. saying something is one thing, but I'm going to be real honest. It really takes away and you're giving power then to someone else to do something. Mm -hmm. You have the power. You as the individual have the power and you can be showing up. I promise you this. I've been mm -hmm. going to the Board of Education meetings, um, being a present, using my voice. You can submit testimonies even if you can't be present. You can actually be a voice in your community. Not only that, I do believe in paper trails. So emails are great, mm -hmm. um, writing things down, calling people. And you guys, even picking up trash. Like mm -hmm. it's it's it doesn't have to be on a crazy scale of activism. I'm talking about how about you just pick up three pieces of trash that you see on the mm -hmm. floor. Mm -hmm. You see it, pick it up. Right. You know, um, we have an individual duty as citizens and we cannot keep relying on everyone else to save us. Mm. We can't rely on everyone else to do things for us. Mm -hmm. We need to step up. And that's that's the empowering part. And we can empower each other. Right. The more we talk, the more connected we get. And that's that's community. Mm -hmm. So if you are not talking to your neighbors, if you're not uh, in your community, and I'm even saying you can go to board meetings in your community. You can mm -hmm. bring things up, but hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, and you do have that power. It's beautiful. It can start at such a small level. And I'm talking kids can do this, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I was a nanny. I had a three-year-old picking up trash with me. You mm -hmm. know, you teach this. And we as adults, too, mm -hmm. parents, aunties, uncles, kapuna, you name it, you also have a responsibility to be instilling this in the children. And wanting them to be part of it let them mm. see it mm -hmm. you know let them right. witness what it's like to be an active part of your community mm -hmm. and it is in my opinion community service is so important and i learned that in high school because it was mandatory in my catholic high school mm -hmm. i didn't understand it and then when i started doing it mm -hmm. there's also that uplifting part of it mm -hmm. you're giving back to your community Mm -hmm. And that's beautiful. That's mm -hmm. what we all need. Right. You're being part of the community itself, yeah. not just saying something. Yes, but you're doing absolutely. Something. So, yeah, that's it's so important to actually ex express that culture to the younger generation because they're going to grow up and they're going to become servants later, you know, service to the community. Right. Mm -hmm. And then if we build that culture, we build that mentality, then they're going to express that to future generations after that absolutely and that's how we create positive change and we we make great change here in hawaii or even the rest of the other states absolutely and on that note just because we're talking about the kids i do want to just say kids are very susceptible and they are just amazing individuals and mm -hmm. little humans that are open to so many things and can mm -hmm. be drifted in many directions. So it's really important that we instill the right morals, the right mm -hmm. values, the right education. Mm -hmm. And in doing so right now, what I'm finding is, is that the programs that are coming out in our school systems is really scaring me. Mm -hmm. um, we have the social emotional learning, which sounds nice, but uh, when you really look into it more, there's some things that you know you might want to opt out of. Mm -hmm. um, it's taking away from the merit system. It's taking away from actual grades, math, science, what you drop your kid off for. Yeah. Um, they're mm -hmm. keeping a lot of secrets behind closed doors. There's mm -hmm. no transparency. Mm -hmm. So right now, I'm working with a small group of people, uh, Moms for Liberty in Honolulu chapter especially, and a few small groups of people that we are formulating currently right now uh, a website. So if you need to opt out of programs that you feel are inappropriate for kids, you can, you, you're gonna get the updates. You're mm -hmm. gonna see, oh, I need to mm -hmm. opt out for this. This is how I opt out. Mm -hmm. If you want to pull your kid out of the school system, you know, not a lot of people talk about the hardships of homeschooling mm -hmm. and you know, again, families in, think about it in Hawaii, how many people have to work more than one job mm. and then homeschooling right. and then that's a whole nother job. So we're trying to really unite people and uniting them, not just we're saying, you know, creating pods. Mm -hmm. Pods are great getting into your community, but you're going to be able to see who's in your community, who's homeschooling, connect with them. Also, if you are just again, I don't have children. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, so for me, what can I volunteer and do? Mm -hmm. You don't have to be an educator, but if you are an educator, you could start your own pod. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a uh, land and mm -hmm. you want to loan your land to uh, this pod mm -hmm. or a group of homeschoolers, mm -hmm. that's beautiful. If you have um, school supplies, if you have any resources or are the resource, uh, yeah. like <laughs> let's say extracurricular activities too. Yeah. Let's say, you know, hey, I'm a fitness instructor. Well, do you want to teach PE this time yeah. of week? <laughs> you, this is your chance. So mm -hmm. you can actually put yourself into the system and people can find you in your community. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to unite the community, taking, you know, again, taking it back and you are going to actually have way more control of their education, what's happening, way more transparency. Mm -hmm. And again, there's such beauty with homeschooling is what I'm researching. And I hope mm -hmm. everyone researches. We will have certain information up, but their actual IQ scores are so much higher. Mm -hmm. They're academics. They are highly intelligent. Mm -hmm. Right now in Hawaii, we found out that IQ scores have dropped 20 points wow. right now 20 That's points well when you isolate them right mm -hmm. and then you know you do this homeschool learning that's on a tablet mm -hmm. I, you just that's not learning yeah, that's a not a complete another another thing to divide people 100 percent. and so what is our goal is to give real education not let it get um shifted sweden was great at this mm. sweden did not do a lockdown there's no change in education at all. They're mm -hmm. not having these dilemmas. When you go to the board of education meetings, they're always like, oh, we need to make sure kids have attendance. We need to make sure that we bring things up. And that's why social emotional learning is so important. Mm -hmm. Why are they not mm -hmm. investigating? Well, I'm going to tell you why. Kids love school. Right. It's not that. It's the fact that you've isolated them, persecuted against them, mm -hmm. and basically disconnected them with their whole environment of where they grow mm. and where they're capable to be super successful. Mm -hmm. um, so we're trying to bring that back. And in doing so, this is a side project that's near and dear to me. Um, and hopefully by next week, this site will come up and I will be publicizing it and you can yeah, enter definitely. yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, again, if you have anything to offer, you do not have to be a parent. Again, this isn't just for that. If you have resources, anything, land, um, that's all prevalent and we mm. need everyone to help out again this is community work right mm -hmm. and that's the whole thing about like like i was talking about how connecting communities with um connecting the people with the community because we are the ones to instill that kind of change yeah. right and then if we want to be able to see differences and um we want to we want to be able to promote something like this a, a project of yours you know what i mean we need to come together you know and that's that goes with every listener every person that's viewing this video that mm -hmm. you have something that you can offer everybody does you know knowledge resources anything but it starts with us oh i love the fact that you said that everyone has something to offer mm -hmm. so i always tell people because some people look at me and one of the biggest things are like you're so brave you're so like they give me these mm -hmm. compliments i'm like so are you mm. like so are you and you are absolutely capable and i always say everyone has a skill set mm -hmm. and i want to preach this everyone has a skill set it doesn't matter how small you think it is that's irrelevant mm -hmm. that's still a skill set and it should be utilized don't ever underestimate yourself flourish utilize that skill set and see where it takes you and see how you can help others mm -hmm. that's beautiful mm -hmm. um I mean, it can go from small to big. I'm not saying everyone needs to be like front lines per se <laughs> with the things that I'm doing, but I am saying that you still can participate. You mm -hmm. can still do something. And remember, everyone needs to be doing something. If you're seeing something wrong and want something changed, start with yourself. Mm -hmm. Be the change you wish to see. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful thing. Right. And that's the whole thing, like, like football teams. I always like watching football, but everybody has a role in place. There's a kicker that specializes in kicking you know what i mean there's a guy that's an yeah, yeah. offensive tackle that's his specialized in blocking you know the quarterback the quarterback's yeah. the guy passing the balls over yeah. so if you're listening to this you have something to offer you can take a role that's something that's part of your skill set and you can just just find out what you're good at and see how you can help out the community. Oh, and I way. love that. I love that. And yes, you can, guys. Mm -hmm. I believe in everyone. Take it again. Just start small. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. you know, right. and you can build your confidence even if you're questioning yourself. Um, that's normal. Yeah. That's normal. I didn't start off this way. I think people forget. Uh, <laughs> I, I wasn't always just like, wow, like, you know, I mean, yeah. it's taken a while to um, find my place, my role. And I always say, you know, you're a vessel and you're a vessel in your community. Mm -hmm. And it is your civil duty to play a role in that. Mm -hmm. Everyone could do it. I promise. Even if they're three years old, they still can't do <laughs> picking up trash is super easy. Of course. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know? This one piece of trash, yeah. guys. Um, I want to circle back. I want to really talk about yeah. uh, your confrontation. I guess I don't want to say confrontation, yeah. but your question to Duke Iona. Oh, yeah. Because um, it was a very simple question and he could have been able to address it later if he wanted to. Right. Even if he didn't have the answers, Absolutely. he could have addressed it later through uh, a phone call or, or tell you, hey, you know, I don't have the time right now. Um, can we talk about this later? Yeah. Right. But. How did you react to that? I mean, okay, so I'm going to be totally <laughs> honest. Um, I saw him pull papers last minute. I uh -huh. do know a little backstory on him. I was actually really excited to meet him. Mm. This is coming from a real place. Um, I have not endorsed a governor yet. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was like, oh, I really want to know more. Mm -hmm. This was not an attack. This was me witnessing something as a constituent and a mm. citizen here that I'm like, wow, this person's going to be running for governor. I My whole understanding is when you vote on something, you should stand by your vote. Right. And then if you don't stand by your vote and we the people need to be represented, are you going to stand by what we say and stand strong with our vote to represent or your own votes when you're putting in all these bills and policies? The governor's role is very serious mm -hmm. uh they have so much power it is it's actually alarming and i hope whoever gets voted in actually wants to relinquish more power back to the people mm -hmm. uh, it's very disturbing what's gone on it, it should not be a dictatorship and pretty much that's what it's been mm -hmm. it's tyrannical and that has to shift so when i went up to duke i was seriously really excited yeah. i told him i'm recording i had one question which was because he asked a reporter Again, like, well, told the reporter, hey, you shouldn't be asking me this question of who they voted for for presidency, talking about Trump. They mentioned mm -hmm. Trump. He's like, well, you should be asking me not about Trump. You should ask me who I voted for, who's currently mm -hmm. in office. Mm -hmm. Well, the reporter did. So he <laughs> literally told them, ask me a different question. Uh -huh. The reporter did. And he still deflected and said, well, that's my personal, like everything. And I understand that people feel like they have to be very diplomatic. Mm -hmm. But when you're diplomatic in this way of lack of transparency, I, that's a, that scares me. Mm -hmm. um, so I was concerned. So I asked the question. I was like, Can, I was actually giving him a chance to redeem himself mm -hmm. in the sense mm -hmm. of clear it up for me. He cut me off and basically said, you know, now's not the time, blah, blah, blah. And I just said, well, I'm a constituent. When is the time? You can easily, and anyone who's running, if they run from you, that is a, a red flag. Right. This man does not know me. He probably doesn't know anything that I've done in the community, which is absolutely fine, which is even better because I'm just I'm just a normal person just asking yeah, a question yeah. who lives here <laughs> and, you know, might vote for you. Uh -huh. But um, it was it was really disheartening. I don't know why he didn't just say, here's a card here. Connect right. with me like this. Something simple. Super like simple. I'm yeah. not saying that you have to answer the question on the spot, but I am going to say he did not leave the, the area. He was still around. It mm. was a uh, it wasn't an event that was so crazy that mm -hmm. I felt like he couldn't answer it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it was what a God's parade. Yeah. And so <laughs> at the same time, I'm just like, OK, so then when like and he just literally ran away from the question mm -hmm. and he asked me too, which I also thought was weird. And this is something I want to touch on, too. He asked me, are you asking any other candidate this question? Well, no, because this is your comment. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, what you stated. But two, why are you asking me if I'm asking other candidates this question mm -hmm. when I'm the people? Mm -hmm. And so if you're representing the people, who cares what I'm asking other candidates? Right. You're representing me. Yeah. So... I think the lack of concern with the people made it more alarming for me and mm. a red flag immediately. I, it rubbed me wrong. It told me, again, the people who hide are usually, again, criminals, liars. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Have something to hide um, and not for the people. Mm -hmm. So that's, I had to wrap it up. I only have, again, 
first impressions are everything. Mm -hmm. And as much as we don't want to be judged, when you're in the public eye, you're going to be judged. Right. It just comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. So I was I was really disappointed. And I still want to hear more from him. I still would like to... Uh, I had other questions, <laughs> you know, because I, I am actually... I was interested in him because I, I haven't seen him around. Right. So as all the other candidates, I've met every single one but him mm. that's running for governor. Mm -hmm. So in the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. But actually, I've met almost... I met majority people too, who's running for governor in the Democratic Party. For me, I do have questions, and if you run from them, I mean, I'm telling you right now, it just looks bad. I mean, you're supposed to be representing the people. We don't want politicians in office that are running from the people because we already have that in office. Right. They already are hiding behind closed doors. They literally are running from us. Why are the hard questions? Why is it so hard to be questioned? Mm. You should embrace it. And mm -hmm. if you trust in your voice and you trust in your decisions, stand by it. Mm -hmm. Stand by it and talk on it. Mm -hmm. Don't don't shy away. And it wasn't shy. It was more like, I mean, he literally shedded. <laughs> the, the <but> <laughs> <folks scared. laughs> yeah. You know, the thing is, like, if if they're already running away from a simple mm -hmm. question, then imagine if they did get elected. Imagine all the things they could be running away from when the people are asking, people are requesting, pleading for answers. 100%. And they, they could still be running. I mean, there's politicians right now I'm thinking of. I'm not going to say their names, but... People have questions for them and they're running away. Yeah, absolutely. That's crazy. Not just running away, but they have bouncers too that yeah. <laughs> they like put on you. I'm not right. Exactly. You know, that is a reality. As mm -hmm. much as it's that's the scary part. I understand having bouncers and everything, but again, these aren't threats. These are questions. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of why I'm still not understanding when did asking questions become so uh, controversial mm -hmm. in the sense that you it's inappropriate mm -hmm. that you have to run and hide. Mm -hmm. You know, I never shy away from a question, especially from the people. Make the time. Mm -hmm. Everyone matters. Your voice does matter. I think that's why there's been more violent crimes, because people they're like, OK, we have questions. We want them answered. OK, you're brushing us off. OK, now we're going to resort to violence. We're going to get guns. We're going to get. We're going to get physical. And then and then people go like, oh, now we got to do a gun reform because these people maybe mm. don't have they have mental health issues. Well, it's because you're limiting their voice. They can't say anything. So they have to, they feel like they have to do something in order to get your attention. Absolutely. And, it, you know, the sad part is, is the whole Second Amendment. I think people forget. Uh, <laughs> We got to look at countries that have given up their rights mm. um, and given mm. up the guns and what's happening there. Now, I'm not mm. talking about necessarily crime and the violence. I'm talking mm. about the tyrannical government. Mm -hmm. So when the White House chooses to disarm themselves, then I'll disarm myself. Mm -hmm. Because if what you're saying <laughs> is true, so the most protected people, we have to protect them. But yet you're using guns. All right. <laughs> You know, and there is there are already incredibly strict gun laws out here. We do not need any more strict. That's the absolute opposite yeah. of what we want. <laughs> right. um, but there is like this tracking. There's this control. And, you know, we need to be able to defend ourselves. Mm -hmm. The minute that we give that up, we give the power away. And unless, like I said, we have to use the example of all these people who are saying, oh, we're protecting people. Oh, you have a gun. You have a gun. Well, then who protects me of you? Mm. You're still a human mm -hmm. being. You know, human beings make errors. Mm -hmm. Human beings are corrupt. And how do I protect myself? Mm -hmm. You know, there's no reason why there should be any limitations at all on owning a gun at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. And I stand by the Second Amendment very strongly. Mm -hmm. um, I stand by the Constitution and Bill of Rights very strongly. Mm -hmm. I don't think... You know, we have to go so into the complexities of everything now. Right. Um, but again, if we're all protected, think about it this way. If they knew that I was carrying, do you think that they would try and attack me? Yeah. You know, I mean, there's that there's that, too. Mm -hmm. So we just have to look and see the demographics and actually where the crimes are really occurring. And I'm seeing the high crimes going on um, and the abuse of power mm -hmm. and uh that's that has to change and that mm -hmm. comes with tougher tougher again um uh, tough on crime right. right because they have to be held accountable and when we just let people go and repeat offenders After 24 hours oh it's <laughs> and it, here it is incredibly alarming uh -huh. so 
how do we create policies that are really for the people protecting the people? Because right now I'm seeing people get away with everything and that is not okay. And you wonder why we have so much crime. Mm -hmm. It's not just about a gun. It's literally because there is no repercussions. Mm -hmm. And if we have mm -hmm. constant, constant offenders, why do we keep putting them out there? Mm -hmm. That's the dilemma. Mm -hmm. It's not the people who are good citizens who are getting these guns through the policies and everything right. else that are committing these crimes either. So why are we punishing the people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a that case no by sense. case basis. Oh, like, 100%. Like, uh, like you were saying about programs that have been good, but then they have one bad apple mm -hmm. that screws it up for the whole program. Yes. And then they try to wipe out the whole program when it's just that person. But mm -hmm. it's the same thing with with guns i mean it's just case by case it's one bad apple that screws it up for everybody else so you don't just restrict gun you don't make more restrictions with gun laws yeah you just work with that one person or those people and then you go from there absolutely and i mean let's remember again what our founding fathers really stood on and let's look back to the constitution i mean i really encourage everyone too that's something that should be brought back in schools is civics we really should be studying the constitution mm -hmm. it is your civil duty to know your own rights mm -hmm. and i think this would actually help for people who later on want to go into law enforcement or mm -hmm. government uh, roles or lawyers or judges whatever the case may be mm -hmm. um to know the rights of the people so they know how to properly defend them mm -hmm. when we take that out of the school system that's a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to be able to defend ourselves, not just by guns, but by the law. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, funny thing. I, I mean, I had questions about your yeah. um, your focus when you're, you know, you get elected. But we actually covered we covered <laughs> all of them, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Um, one thing I want to cover is uh, so you, you've talked with Board of Education, Bruce Foss. We talked about Mayor Blangiardi. Uh, people can check it out on your IG lives or your, your videos yes. on your page. Um, and you also talk to Heidi Armstrong. Um, tell us about, you know, your interactions and, and what you what you got from it. Yeah. So the, um, basically what's been going on with the Board of Education is that they've had closed meetings, their Zoom calls. They finally opened up to the public. Mm -hmm. My biggest issue was before that was the Department of Education. Keith Hayashi was the interim superintendent for a while, and he is now currently the superintendent. Mm -hmm. He was voted in. The problem with this is the Department of Education gives no communication back. <laughs> so call them. <laughs> talk to Iris. She's a sweetheart. She's the secretary. Um, but unfortunately, they they do a lot of shifting and um, don't really get back to you mm. on serious issues. Mm -hmm. And it's been a real dilemma. So we need to speak to Keith Hayashi because the truth is, is they blame the Department of Ed uh, Health, right? Mm. Oh, well, we go off of what More they recommend. Yeah, oh, we go off of gosh. their recommendations. Well, the thing is, is everything in the Department of Health is strongly recommended or recommended, but that is not law. Mm -hmm. It's a suggestion. It's a suggestion. Yes. And so they always relinquish it back to the Department of Education, uh -huh. who, again, would be Keith Hayashi and his program and all of those workers. Mm -hmm. And that's a big dilemma. So we showed up. We started showing up and we're asking to be seen. We're asking for appointments. Mm -hmm. I finally got granted an appointment. The Board of Education finally had an in-person meeting. I was able to be there and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go downstairs and just, you know, see, because it's all in the same building. Mm -hmm. I went downstairs, boom. I kind of, if you know me, I kind of pushed my way through a little bit, like a door was open. They have a lot of closed door policies. I saw the door open, I walked in. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I got stopped right away, actually, by Hardy Armstrong. Yeah. <laughs> Boom, arms out. Oh. And then Keith Hayashi comes out. And I was like, all we want is a meeting. Oh. That's it. All we want is a meeting with you. Give me 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, why have you not gotten back to my emails? You know what he said? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll get back to you. I'm sorry, I'm busy. <laughs> And he wouldn't even look at me. And I just, I didn't understand. Oh and I'm gosh. like, so what's the appropriate time? He's like, they have no appropriate time for an email or mm -hmm. a callback. Uh, and I know this personally. And I do suggest, do not take my word for it. Remember, I always say, do it yourself. Go mm -hmm. ahead and call. Um, ask the questions. Feel free. Mm -hmm. See what happens. I always say, experience it yourself. <laughs> Don't take my word for it. Go ahead. Yeah, be part so, of the community, right? Oh, absolutely. Go there yourself, right? Hold them, hold them accountable. So when I had my meeting with Keith Hayashi, um, he told me it came with a disclaimer. And this disclaimer was I had to come alone. I couldn't record what? 
Oh yeah, I I have the email and I think I did post that because I was very like, Whoa, what? What the? I heck? couldn't record. I had to come alone. Um, it had a lot of different things. He said that he was gonna be having a note taker there, so I show up with my arbiter who Wait, also so you can't record, but they can have their own note taker. Yes, interesting. But I did not agree. I said I observed. Uh -huh. What he had stated, uh -huh. I show up to a building, uh, which is actually my neighborhood. And I did. I thought this was a school. Mm -hmm. It's actually shut down school, Queen uh, Lily Kolani Elementary School. Mm -hmm. And it's a DOE building now. I did not know this going in. Mm -hmm. And it was on lockdown. And there was 16 men what? surrounding it. ATVs, police, sheriffs, um, DOE yeah. security. I was just like, what is happening? So I walk up to the gate and I'm just like, Hey, I have an appointment. <laughs> um, I'm a little confused. I thought, like, what's going on? They're like, uh -huh. well, who did you come with? And I was like, my arbiter, like, one person, uh -huh. you know? Because if you can bring someone, I just think I should bring someone. And also, if you notice in the Board of Education meetings that are previously recorded, you could all see, uh, you will see Keith Hayashi actually has an arbiter himself mm. who speaks for him when he can't answer a question. Mm. If someone is more knowledgeable than you on a subject, you want them present. Mm. And that's exactly what that was. Um, I was utilizing this time to basically deliver all the emails that he hasn't answered. Mm. And I collected about a stack this big mm -hmm. um, for for deliveries to get their voices heard. Mm -hmm. And I wanted them to feel like their voices were heard. I'm like, I'm going to personally deliver it to him. Mm -hmm. And waiting in the car 45 minutes, we couldn't get out of the car. Um, and I was told that I was denied the meeting because he, I brought someone with me. So that meeting got canceled. It was actually a huge uh, dilemma and it did become a scene. I was I was devastated. I was really devastated because yeah, he wasted your time. Not only wasted my time, but I was really wanting to be there for the right. people. Yeah. And I was representing them. Mm -hmm. So I'm just one person. And the reason why you guys I'm single, I don't have kids. I'm able to show up. I'm my own business owner. So I'm able to make the time. And that's why I represent so many people. That's why so many people reach out to me because they can't always be present. Mm -hmm. And um, I hear them and I actually do read your emails mm -hmm. and um, I do like <laughs> read it like what you write me. Yeah. So uh, and I care about you and a lot of time I'll, I'll call you I'll, I do voice messages a lot you got to personalize people more mm -hmm. and um so with the board of education I started showing up after that and I go to every single meeting today was a meeting it's the first one that I've missed today because they were supposed they usually start at 11 mm -hmm. um they started at 1 30 today which I'm here but I'm so blessed very interesting it's yes. like they, it's like they knew <laughs> I know right it's so it's like oh man That's so, so weird. yeah and I always show up because we need to keep the pressure on and uh -huh. you know they are supposed to in their bylaws have six meetings a year with the public and that has not happened in over two years so my Whoa. goal, yeah, and That's you wa crazy. you wonder why parents get upset. And I told them, you know, and it's hard to get anything on an agenda. Mm. But in doing so, I'm talking to people. I'm trying to make friends. I'm learning their policies and procedures. And in doing so, I'm seeing how the DOE and BOA are very disconnected. Mm -hmm. But the Board of Education, they actually do talk to you. They will write you back. They can be very kind. Um, and I have had a meeting with them. And we are about to have our first public meeting, which is a huge win. Mm. Um, and mm -hmm. it was a big deal for me. And talking to uh, the agenda item is going to be how do we communicate better with parents and the school system? Mm -hmm. Because when you drop your kids off right now, you're completely disconnected. Parents aren't even allowed on campus, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like you drop your kid off, you pick your kid up. You're not seeing it. We don't have these PTA meetings as much, if at all. Mm -hmm. Right. And if it's web, so there's no accountability and you're really being disconnected from your children. And these parents who once used to walk their kids to class, talk to other talk parents, to other parents yeah. you know, and join together, mm -hmm. we've separated them. Mm -hmm. And this divide is not OK, needs to change. So that's been my huge focus. Every agenda item I try and look at, I try and give testimony. I say try. You either do or you don't. Right. Mm -hmm. So I do. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and so, you know, you show up, you give testimony. You can also give written testimony. But there needs to be corrections with this because Board of Education is supposed to have someone from every county there, too. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That's not always the case. They are on on zoom sometimes uh, are they falling asleep uh, i mean have you looked at it i just 
it's sad. Um, so I've just seen this huge disconnect and lack of accountability. Bruce Vaz is now the new chair of the Board of Education, and he he is sponsoring this meeting. He is stepping up. I am very appreciative of this mm -hmm. because that shows what Catherine Payne previously did not do. Mm -hmm. Right? Catherine Payne refused to meet with me. Mm. Um, there is really great staff at the Board of Education, but we still need the transparency and that's still something we're working on still something we want to bridge these gaps and so it's been that's kind of been like where my heart is you know yeah, my heart's yeah, with the cakey and uh like they're near and dear to me that's our future mm -hmm. and when i see so many parents and when i hear i mean literally hear their cries we got to do something we have to do better you know mm -hmm. it, we owe it to the people to do better so mm -hmm. the fact that he's open to it and the community i'm very i'm very much so looking forward to this yeah, um definitely. just just bridging the gap right mm -hmm. and that goes with the efforts that you've put forth and many others that have put forth to to make that a reality oh yeah and let me just say you might see me in the forefront but there are many people working behind the scenes mm -hmm. and always give credit where credit's due i am one entity but you all are many and like i said everyone has a skill set so there are plenty of people behind the scenes mm -hmm. who are doing so much as well like mm -hmm. i'm talking so much there are times that i um i'm so joyed and like grateful for everyone mm -hmm. in their efforts because everyone does have their skill sets yeah <laughs> uh, and then there are times where you know i i am doing a lot and mm -hmm. you know i can be overwhelmed at times i don't always get back to people in a timely manner unlike a lot of these uh elected officials uh they <laughs> they have secretaries i do not <laughs> so i do my best and i always tell people if you don't hear from me within 24 hours always write me back um, I might have messed up, you know, we, yeah. we take on a lot, yeah. but we are true public servants. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, um, I think, I feel like you answered this, but one of the last questions is why do you think you're the right candidate to be oh. elected? Yeah. So I always try and remain humble and not prideful. And I, uh, I want to say actually, that's why I'm not ego based. Yeah. I can take criticism. I can hear people. I do hear people. I am going, you're going to see me, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to show up. I'm going to give you the time <laughs> open door policy. Um, and I'm not going to be bought and paid for. Mm -hmm. I'm willing truthfully to lay down my life for others. Mm -hmm. And I see the corruption as people slowly start to move up into these positions and I'm full transparency. So I think that aspect really needs to be brought to the forefront too. Mm -hmm. Um, you're, I'm not in hiding. And so I think, I am not a career politician. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am passionate and I truly believe that I have the skill set to stand strong for the community, mm -hmm. to still respect the people in my community. And my heart is in this 100% because I love the people mm -hmm. and I love the islands. So why do I feel like I'm the best? Because again, I just believe in myself and my efforts beforehand that's unpaid, just mm -hmm. doing this from my heart speak for itself i say it always actions speak louder than words and you know just because you're taking pictures with someone and showing up at an event you know that's <laughs> like what are you doing behind the scenes right. you uh -huh. know and we have a lot of photo ops and people who are like yep. i'm seeing my incumbent in the mail like taking pictures with people and setting things up but i'm like but what have you accomplished mm -hmm. And I think the biggest thing is what have you accomplished? And I see myself of what I've done in just a short period of time and how much I've learned and grown mm -hmm. uh, and what I participated in. And I am a sponge and I am here for the people. Mm -hmm. And that's why you should vote for me because I am for the people. Mm -hmm. I mean, one thing is you already said you're gonna show up, which is probably more than what any politician has done in the past, I don't even know how many years, but still, <laughs> I mean like, that's what people need. They need someone, they need a face to to be that representative for them and to, to know that they're going to be there for them. And then hopefully the community will be there for the representative as well. So it's a, it, there's a connection there. Absolutely. And that's what we're missing now. But that's why there's there's people like you. There's uh, Kaleo, Kaleo Nakoa. There's Absolutely. guys like him. There's there's many others out there that are are pushing for this this change, which shouldn't have have happened you know what i mean where there's there's this disconnect there should have always been that connection there you know absolutely what I mean? and shout out to sean as well sean ritchie 
another one of good uh, man good man yeah yeah and so and that's what we need is more good genuine people out there right mm -hmm. um and i always say a lot of the times people talk about right or left republican or democrat mm -hmm. nonpartisan. why are we not um seeing again who is best for the job get mm -hmm. to know your candidate right learn about them, ask them the hard questions, you know, see how they react. That is how you're going to know who's going to represent you. I challenge everyone to really study and learn mm -hmm. your district, know even what your district is, your mm -hmm. precinct, um, get involved in your community. There are so many good people right now who are running, mm -hmm. who are not career politicians. And I'm not saying that we need to have always term limits. Mm -hmm. I do think, you know, see like seniors, like, you know, seasoned people are needed. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're you're skilled, but there has to be when you're you're doing good work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. So if you're not doing good work and you're not accomplishing things, uh -huh. and you're posing, especially at these banks and other things, and you're getting funding from certain people, we have to ask the right questions. Mm -hmm. So really get to know your candidate, see where their money is coming from. I mean, I'm grassroots. I'm not getting like corporations donating to me. Mm -hmm. um, it's for the people. And that's what we really need to look at. And I love Kaleo Nakoa. He's just great. Yeah. He shows up at the BOE too. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Kaleo. Yeah. Shout out to Kaleo. Uh, Jessica, once again, thank you for coming on the show and, and talking story with me and talking story with the rest of the audience that are listening. Uh, how can people reach you? Like, what's your campaign, social yeah. media, and then other forms of ways people yeah. can Yeah, so um, I do have a website. So it's Jessica Priya, which is P-R-I-Y-A.com. Mm -hmm. You can go there to see my campaign information. You mm -hmm. can also go to my Instagram, which is at uh, Jessica for the number four mm -hmm. state rep on Instagram and then I have my private account too. It's not very private, it's public. <laughs> but if you want to see it on Instagram, it is at my underscore H I L I F E underscore eyes. And um, I kind of go both ways on uh, what I post. I try and definitely hold people accountable. Mm -hmm. So you'll see that more on my private page and then um, kind of what I'm campaigning for more on my campaign side. So that's the best way. And you can also write me uh, with an email. So Jessica, again, for the number four state rep at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And I, like I said, I'm an open book. So I encourage everyone to contact me uh, if you have any questions, if you want to get involved, if you want to be a part of anything that you see me doing, mm -hmm. message me. The more, the merrier. I welcome it. Mm -hmm. And and then uh, for your, your side project, of course, that yes. you're going to be um, releasing next week. Uh, yes. Do you guys have a... You guys kind of have the website already known. So or? the website is starting, I and I wish that I had the name right mm -hmm. off the bat, um, but this is something that we have taken a domain um, bought from someone else, so we're going to utilize that, but I will be announcing it soon mm -hmm. um, because right now it's under construction and being built. So once mm -hmm. that name comes out, you will be seeing like a huge post for me with the name, everything on both my um, Instagrams, my Facebook, you name it, and on my actual campaign page because I'm going to challenge everyone to um, to put it on their campaign page. Mm -hmm. I think this is a great program mm -hmm. that if you mm -hmm. are really about um, the education and community, every single person who's running should want to put this on their page. I mm -hmm. think it's a beautiful project and I'm very excited for it. And it is for all islands, not just Oahu. Mm -hmm. And I'll definitely put that in the description of the video as I'll well. So then when, when it comes yeah, it out, it should be out by the time that this comes out. Yeah, so. <laughs> definitely. So I'll, yeah, I'll put it. I'll yes, put it there as well. I love that. Thank you so much. Of course. And thank yeah. you so much for having me. You're so special, and I love what you're doing. And it's so great that you're giving people like me and everyone else just a voice mm -hmm. um, to really like learn more about people. I just mm -hmm. think that's a beautiful thing. So I'm, I feel very honored that you're having me on today. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I, you know, honestly, I did I, I did the the mayor candidate so a couple of years ago, 2020. Uh, didn't have Langiardi on, unfortunately. But I had like Amin Mia, I had Chun James, had Bud Stonebreaker, had a bunch... I had Mufi Hanneman. Oh, uh, funny story, we could, say, we could talk about that <laughs> off camera. But um, yeah, I had a... You know, I wanted to give people uh, a chance to understand these people or yeah. just to hear them because... You know, with the pandemic, I mean, uh, with election season, there wasn't really any outlets to to show like, oh, these these people are running. This is what they're about. You know what I mean? Yeah. And 
um, now I'm doing it again with uh, governor or state reps or senator, people running for senator I'm or city council like Kaleo. Um, I'm doing it again, but I'm also giving people a shot to, you know, just to talk story and, and to tell their heart about it because the media these days, they're not going to give you guys a platform. Absolutely. Because they're going to be like, okay, where's the, where's the money? Can you pay me like what, two grand to, and we'll give you like a 30 second thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's where they forget about the grassroots um, and the funding. And it's a really unfortunate because if you actually look into the records of who wins, Mm -hmm. usually it's who has the most money. Mm -hmm. And let's not forget too, 90% of the American media is only owned by six companies. So it's clearly going to come with a bias as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's why it really takes people like you, grassroots, and just, you know, giving people a voice. We need more of this and it creating our own media, if Mm -hmm. you will. Yeah. to really get the truth out there and give people the opportunity to speak. I think it's beautiful, and I mm-hmm. just really appreciate all that you do. Thank you. And, and you know, a, a funny thing is, I, I always say this, like, imagine a, a candidate running just to get, like, minimum wage to get in, and you'll see the real people that actually want to come to work for change rather than a lot of these career politicians. Okay. If only we could take the money out of politics uh-huh. or if they could wear everyone who's endorsing them yeah. <laughs> at all times, that would be beautiful too. Mm-hmm. But definitely the money needs to be taken out of politics. If we really want people who are for the people, that's the way it'll go. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot of backhanded deals that are going on and you know that really should be exposed too. Mm-hmm. So we really need people who are really for the people. And that's why like, I really focus on we the people. I actually you know, do an email out to people, we the people 808 Mm -hmm. at (laughs) ProtonMail to update people how they can get involved in Mm -hmm. new news and what's going on because we are a community and, Mm -hmm. you know, getting the truth out there is, that's a, it's a very difficult thing right now with Mm -hmm. censorship. So that's something that we're trying to uh, get away from. And Mm -hmm. that's the way we do that is becoming more of a community and sharing the information Mm -hmm. within each other. And I, (laughs) I always love it. It's like, you know, expose them all. If you have some information on people, including myself, that's fine. Expose them all. Mm -hmm. Um, If you have nothing to hide and if your heart's in the right place, we all have a past. Mm -hmm. We all have a history. We're all not perfect, Mm -hmm. but that's not the point. What are you doing today? What are you doing for the people? Who's filling your pockets right now? Mm -hmm. And we need to really talk about those Mm -hmm. things like a lot. And you'll see the Democrats really going head to head right now in their debates talking just about that. (laughs) (laughs) And and who's actually showing up to answer questions rather than run away? Oh, 100 percent. I mean, look, we are serving you, right? What's a true public servant? I think we've lost sight of that. Uh And if you are scared to be challenged then maybe you shouldn't be in office Mm -hmm. or in that position. Um, And like I said, I've been told they don't want they who's they they don't want to speak to you. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be challenged. Well, that's weird because I just (laughs) welcome a good challenge. I'm just like, come on, (laughs) let's go. Um, Because I again, if you stand by what you're doing and stand Mm -hmm. for the people, then that comes out pure. You know, that's your heart. Mm -hmm. And um Like I said, you don't have to have all the answers. It's not what I'm saying at all. But I am saying just stand strong with the people and don't shy away from them. That's who you're representing. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Definitely. Uh, Guys, before we comply, I just want to let you know if you like the video, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Share with everyone because I think Jessica has a really good heart. She means for the people. She is for the people. So I think we need to get... We need to get you more mainstream there. We need to get people like you to talk about things. You know what I mean? Get in front of people's faces. You know what I mean? And and to get the truth out there. I think you you believe in the truth. You are you stand for the truth. One hundred percent. And uh, we yeah we need to we need to get the truth out there. Absolutely. And thank you for giving me a voice to get more truth out there and for people to get to know me. Mm-hmm, definitely. So Jessica, uh, this is to you. This is to your campaign. Uh, this is good luck to you and and you. continue fighting the good fight. I'll Definitely. cheers to that. Kampai. Thank you.